Thank you, God bless. Praise the Lord. Unstoppable champions, I said, Praise the Lord. This morning, already we've heard so much, so much good material already injected into you. But now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just wrap it up. If I could, I'll take your hand because I'm going on a journey. And in that journey, I am unstoppable. And I say, give me your hand. Why are you? And I hold your hand. I say, follow the steps. One, two, three. And as you keep on following, and I keep on holding your hand, you'll get there. Yeah. I will get there. You'll get there in Jesus' name. Father, we welcome your presence this morning, Son, Lord Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the Maker of Champions, we welcome you this morning, Holy Ghost, the one that inspires everyone who aspires so that we can get to our desire. We welcome you to every life this morning in Jesus' name. Hold everyone's hand make everyone unstoppable and get us there thank you lord in jesus name we pray god bless you, you can sit down this day i'm actually talking on a number of things i'm talking on taking a zero to become a hero I'm talking on a number of things. I'm talking on those who have failed getting up there and getting to the foremost place in life. But I've titled it Championship at Every Level Made Easy. Championship at every level, the level of primary, the level of secondary, the level of tertiary, the level of going beyond even colleges and universities, and the level of being young adults at every level. Championship at your level made easy. I'm going to start with two people that came, they became greater and greater. In First Chronicles chapter 11, and I'm reading there from verse 9. So David watched greater and greater for the Lord of hosts was with him. David, the Lord of hosts was with him. In the private, in the public, as a shepherd boy, as a shepherd king, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of all power. The Lord that controls the army of heaven and the army on earth. The Lord of hosts. The Lord under whose authority and sovereignty even the Philippians were. The Lord of hosts. The one that controls everything that happened on the right side, on the left side, in the positive, in the negative. Everything that happens, everything under the authority, the canopy, the power, and uh, the protection of the Lord of hosts, he was with him. He will be with you. And when he's with you every time, everywhere, in every situation, you'll become an unstoppable champion. So, so David watched greater and greater for the Lord of hosts was with him. The second person I show you is in Esther chapter 9. And I'm reading there from verse 4. Es Esther chapter 9 verse 4. For Mordecai was great 
in the king's house. And his fame went through, throughout, went out throughout all the provinces of the kingdom. For this man, Mordecai, waxed greater and greater. On the one hand, we have David. On the other hand, we have Mordecai. And the story, even though they went through paths that nobody would have thought that they could go greater and greater, but eventually, whatever your history is, whatever your past has been, this day, the mark of heaven is on your forehead that you will go greater and greater, stronger and stronger, higher and higher, better and better in Jesus' name. I'm used anywhere I go uh, to the young people. I'm used to hearing their voice when I say something that requires an amen. I want what we call thunderous amen. Yeah. We're looking at 36 here. Number one, we're looking at the path already marked for good championship. The path. That already the God of heaven has marched out. All I need to do, all you need to do is get on that road and begin at the beginning is the path that the Almighty has marked out for good championship. Number two, the perseverance. Can we get anywhere without persevering? As a toddler, we started. Could we have gone anywhere without persevering? We tried to stand up. We fell. Could we have got anywhere if we didn't continue standing, falling, standing, falling, standing, falling, and eventually we stand and we're stable. And then we started walking and we took some steps and we stumbled. And can, could we have started walking and continue walking without perseverance? Anything you do, anything you lay your hand upon, anything you envision, anything you plan, anything you forge your head on, there must be that word perseverance. The perseverance while moving towards the great championship good championship great championship number three is the pattern and the model for glowing championship Gl glowing championship you know somebody can be good may not glow somebody may be great even growing may not glow but you come to the point you come to the situation that the championship you have glows. And people can see the light of that. They can see the encouragement in that. They can see the model you are setting for them on that. Because you have the pattern and the model for glowing championship. I come to number one. Number one is the past. Already marched out by God. For good championship. Already I read First Chronicles chapter 11, verse 9. Now I come to Psalm 18, verse 35. It says, Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy right hand as holding me up. And thy gentleness hath made me great. Here, David summarized everything that came from heaven to heart, from heaven to his life, from heaven to his habits, 
from heaven, every seed that came to heaven, and it came straight to his life. And now he gives the glory to God, and he said, God, thou hast been, you have given me the shield of thy salvation. Salvation. Many of us, maybe all of us, who have heard that word. But David now says, there is something that is called the shield of thy salvation. I'll come back to that. And thy right hand as holding me up. He said, I could have fallen down. I could have fallen without any possibility of rising. I could have failed. We failed woefully. I could have failed. Failed permanently. I could have succumbed to all the challenges that came. And I could have been forgotten. But he said, I got saved. And then your right hand as holding me up. And your gentleness. What he meant by that is, you correct me. But in gentleness. You instruct me in gentleness. You lead me in gentleness. You inspire me in gentleness. And you go along with me. I feel your gentleness. And thy gentleness has made me great. Now, what he says in all that, there are some steps that the Almighty God took him through. And these steps, they make up the path for good championship. Number one, in that first step, personal salvation. Personal salvation. Not family salvation. Denominational salvation. Tribal salvation. Personal. That this comes to you. You need the shield of salvation that will shield you from Satan, salvation. That will shield you from sin, salvation. That will shield you from satanic attack, salvation. That will shield you from sickness, salvation. That will shield you from suffering, salvation. That will shield you from sorrow, salvation. And so, the very first thing that David said he had is personal salvation how did he do that he confessed his sin he asked for forgiveness and he said he had been a bloody man but he will not continue like that and he received the salvation of the lord bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name who forgiveth all the iniquities and healeth all thine transgressions. Now, that's number one, and that's what you have to what you need to have. You need to have that salvation so that as you are moving on, all the vicissitudes of life, the challenges of life, they may try to cross your way and double cross you and make you stop. Salvation will be a shield the shield of thy salvation number two profitable studies profitable studies you see the lord has so made the earth that the farmer cannot reap except his souls the lord has so given us the world everything in the world Everything desirable, everything we need, and he gave us a brain. And then he gave us books. And until there's connection, good connection, daily connection, and the firm connection between the books and the brain, we cannot succeed. But thank God, you have a good brain. I have a good brain. And your brain will not decrease in worth and in value in Jesus' name. And you bring a good connection, a daily connection between the books. I'm not talking of novels. 
I'm not talking of stories, you know. I'm talking of books, significant books in your course of study. And then you have a profitable study. David said, the Lord God of heaven has taught his hands. And as he was taught, he followed. That is what we do. We have number one, personal salvation. We have number two, profitable studies. And then we have planned success. Planned success. You know, there's so many roads in our state here. Going here, going there, going there. You must determine your destination. Before you take the road, somebody gets on the road and uh, we ask, where are you going? <laughs> he said, I'm sorry, I forgot that. I just saw that this new road, expressway, is so nice, I wanted to drive on it. Well, life doesn't work that way. There are many roads, but for you to get to your destination, you have to plan that first. I am getting there. I am going there. I am destined for that place. And then when you have seen where you are going, then you see the road that will take you there. We plan it. Plan success. Do you have any planning in your life? Have you known where you're going? Have you known the road and the path that will take you there? You might spend all your energy. You might be at top speed on a wrong road. All the energy and the top speed will get you to a wrong destination because you didn't have planning. What do I want to become in life? And what are the subjects that will lead me there? Where do I want to be in life? And what are the connections that will get me there? And what should I focus on in life? And what's the vision that will get me there? Number three is planned success. And that's why it says in the Psalms, if you look at verse 3 in particular, it says there, and uh, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Have you, have you noticed? Planted. The thing that just not come, it wasn't the wind that you studied in biology that just took the seed and put it there. No, this one is deliberately planted and plan and it says he shall be a person who has a planned life a purposeful life a goal he has in life he'll be planted by the rivers of water that bring get forth his fruit in a season and his leave also shall not wither look at this and whatsoever he doeth he does not prosper in what he does not do. He does not uh, get a good result on the exam he did not take. He does not get a good work where he did not apply and he did not have an interview. It's what he does. It's what he does. What do you do? Every day. Today, I must do something that gets me forward to the goal I have. And whatsoever he does, shall prosper. I come to number four. And it's prevented setbacks prevented setbacks you see there are people there have been setbacks in life but no problem I say for example i wanted to go only one step a day but i know that there might be one step back so what do i do i go two steps forward deliberately deliberately so that if the one step backward comes i'll still have the gain of one did you hear the parable is so i went for to sow and some fell by the wayside and the birds came and picked up everything and the next one it fell on rocky ground and it didn't have depth of earth and because of that, he could not bring forth fruit. And the next one fell on thorny ground. 
and the thorns grow and choke the seed. I could not bring any fruit to perfection, but it says, and some fell on good ground and brought forth thirtyfold, sixtyfold, a hundredfold. What do I learn from that? I must look at what I'm doing. I must look at where I am planting the seed. If I see that every time all the seed I've been planting, all the efforts I've been making, and I persevere, persevere, everything is on the wayside ground. I must go to the next. And then I see it's rocky ground. I must not stay there and be committed to only sowing and studying and walking. I must see what's it generating. And then I see this is number four. What do I do? I give more attention to ground number four. I give more time to sowing on ground number four. For. In fact, I take all my time out of the useless wayside and the rocky ground and the thorny ground and then all the four segments, all the four quarters, I put everything on the good ground. Have you looked at your life? Have you looked at this one produces nothing? But I spent time. This one produces nothing. And I spent time. This one appears to be producing. But at the end of the day, everything is withered. And then I've seen number four ground. Is the one that actually produces all that I need. Pack all the time together. All the efforts together. Center it on number four. And then you have those setbacks. They will not hinder you in Jesus' name. Now, this is a practical uh, study. You must be looking at your life. Uh-huh. That area. I spent so much time there. What does it yield? Our friends, I talk, I talk, I talk. What does that yield to my final exam? I read all these novels and I spend time. I enjoy the stories. That's all right. But what does it yield to my final exam? To the destination, the place I'm going. Number five is proper speech. Proper speech. Very important that the words of our mouth that comes from the thought of our heart, what we say, what we say. Uh, you know, you go to a doctor and he's, uh, you know, he's examined you and he's, he's saying, This is what you have. Mind what you say. No, doctor, I don't accept that. It's Satan that has problem and you are not saying okay why did you come to me my dear word you're speaking to a teacher and he says this is the way i've gone this way before i've done this before and you say teacher i read an author and he says something different and if i count him wise then i'll count you foolish mind your words the words you say, the proper speech in life. And then I say, way you talk to your junior brother, junior sister, that's another way you talk to daddy and talk to mommy. That's the way you talk to family and friends. There's another way you talk to somebody you are meeting for the first time, but he holds the key to enter the door of success in his son. Mind your speech all in life. Think before you talk. Meditate. If I say it this way, if I say it that way, what will be the result? Proper speech. Number six, purposeful steadfastness. And, and that's what we discover from all the people that succeed. You have heard about Thomas Edison. He had a purpose. That's what I want to have. I want to light up 
the walls because at that time there was no electric bulb no fluorescent nothing all the had candles there candles there and some of the church houses were burning down and thomas edison had this purpose I was lighting up every room of every house, in every city, in every state, in every nation of the world. And then he failed. And he failed. And he failed. And somebody came to him and said, Thomas Edison, looks at you, I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm failing. He said, no. I've not been failing, I must say. But all the experiments you are conducting, nothing as what? He said, I have learned 999 ways that, does not work, that do not work. Now, because all these do not work, I didn't actually fail backwards. I failed forward now i can tell what to do that's the thing in our lives purposeful steadfastness he was steadfast he did it and he did it again he did it and he did it again if that is what the lord has created you for and what he has appointed you for it's purposeful steadfastness ah i went the wrong way come back and go to the right path again and i want to announce to you today your candidate for success number seven is productive service productive service you know they, they, what we are made for is to serve look at those trees there they are green leaves they serve they purify the air with breathe and look at you know the animals there are animals that carry human beings from one place to the other before the you know before the cars and all the trains and the and the place before they came everyone every sinner has a purpose why do you want to succeed because i want to serve my nation better i want to serve the people of God better. And when you understand that anywhere you are, even as a young man, as a young woman, and you're just growing up, what I knew already, I'm using that I am of service. It is that productive service that then highlights your life. That brings you to the limelight. And they say, he can do it. She can do it. Because this is what he had done. That the path that leads us to good championship. Because we have personal salvation. Profitable studies. Planned success. Prevented setbacks. Proper speech purposeful steadfastness and now you'll be a productive child of God you render service you render service to your community you render service in the school you render service in the place of work you render service everywhere you go and as your service is productive so you also you'll be promoted higher higher thunderous amen higher in jesus name in your life i come to number two now number two we're looking at the perseverance while moving towards great championship now god knows that there are loads, there are challenges. Why doesn't God remove all those challenges? He knows there's a Satan in the world. Father God, why don't you kill Satan 
so that I can have freedom to move on and do what I need to do without any hindrance from Satan. God knows there are times of challenges and times of sicknesses that will hinder my progress. What will he allow those situations? We need to understand the Lord has given us muscles, nerves, mind to develop. And is the muscle or is the nerve is everything we have within that will be stronger to make us get to the place of championship. And all those things that come, they come to strengthen our nerves, our muscles, and they come to strengthen our shoulders to be able to carry the heavy load and the heavy weight if all those things were not there. And you are born with a complete set of bones, blood, tissue, brain cells, everything. If there was nothing to challenge and to make us get up, our muscles and veins and cells will still remain like at the baby stage. If the challenges that come, the difficulties that come, and the things that come away, they are the things that help us to become what we ought to be. And anytime you have a challenge and your back is not able to carry that challenge, and shoulders are not strong enough to carry all those challenges, the prayer is not, Lord, take away the sin on my back. Uh -uh. The prayer is strengthening my backbone that this load I'll be able to carry and you'll carry and you'll see succeed in Jesus name now in this point number two we're looking at Esther chapter 9 and I'm reading from verse 4 for Mordecai was great in the king's house and his name went out throughout all the provinces for this man Mordecai was greater and greater ah, but Mordecai is not here why am I reading about him number one because God has written about him in his book number two because all the things that were written at four time were written for our learning Number three, because what we need to do is to climb on the shoulders of the champions that went before us. And then as we climb on their shoulders, we'll see what they have done and how they did it. And we're able to do the same thing. Look at chapter 10, Esther chapter 10, verse 3. In Esther chapter 10, verse 3, for Mordecai, the Jew, was next unto the king Ahasuerus, and great among the Jews, and accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people, and speaking peace to all his seed speaking peace to all his seed he became great and as he became great he became useful not only useful to himself or to his nuclear family but useful unto the whole nation and all the 127 provinces. And that's what the Lord wants to make of us. 
that the championship we're talking about. Now, watch pass, watch road, and watch steps. Did Mordecai follow that he became the champion of the day and that you are going to become the champion of your day? God bless you. Double amen. Triple amen. Triple championship. Look at the steps they followed. Number one, the conviction of a future champion. The conviction of a future champion. Show me a man. Show me a woman that knows is going to climb the mountain, is going to get to the top of the mountain, and that is where his destiny is. There is something you find about him, conviction. Others bow, he will not bow. They try to convince him, he will not bow. They try to change his mind, he will not bow. The future championship was greater than all the things that came around him. What conviction do you have? An athlete will have a conviction. That's why practices every day. A future engineer will have a conviction. That's why he studies every time. A future doctor will have conviction and all the other classmates are not going to be doctors. He understands and therefore he doesn't copy them. He doesn't do what he do because he is a future champion. In which way? My son, my daughter, my brother, my sister there. In which way do you distinguish yourself and say, Others may, but I will not. Number one, the conviction of a future champion. Number two, the confidence of a firm champion. Now, trouble came because Mordecai will not bow to Haman. And the plan was very serious. He was going to be destroyed. His mind was affected. His soul was affected. He cried. He wept. But, you know, crying is not the issue. If you can still see your future vision through your tears, that's okay. Weeping is not the issue. Sorrow is not the issue. Suffering is not the issue. If you can still see your future championship and destiny through those tears and through the sorrow and through the suffering, then that's what champions are. The next time you cry, don't let your tears wipe away your confidence in God. Your trust in God. He told Esther, he said, well, we're in a time of sorrow, a time of suffering, and Haman has decided it's going to kill all the Jews. And you are there, Esther, help us. And, uh, you know, first of all, Esther gave an excuse, and then he said, don't think uh, you are saved because you are there. And if you who will bring deliverance from another source. That man had confidence. That's the confidence of a firm champion. We're looking at number three. Number three is the conspiracy of a furious failure. Furious falling champion. A man had been the champion before the king. He was next to the king. He called the shots. And whatever he said, final. And then he was going to, because now he was furious, a furious 
fallen champion and he conspired and even his family members said what are you thinking about Mordecai search the gallows and set it up and go to the king and tell him you want Mordecai hand there there is no gallows strong enough to hang you because you are the future champion nothing they say nothing they do nothing they conspire about is strong enough is great enough to hang and to stop our future champion in this stage in this nation the lord has fingered you out you will be a champion conspiracies there conspiracies there in the forest in the bush in the sea under the sea in the village anywhere all those conspirators because of you they are scattered in jesus name and so the conspiracy could not catch him and you know this man Mordecai did not have long legs, did not have good contacts. Heaven was his contact. Heaven will be your contact. We're well, looking at number four is the compensation of a faithful champion. The compensation of a faithful champion. Now, at this time now, Haman went to the king. And he wanted to ask for our future champion to be hanged. And in the night, the king could not sleep. And because he could not sleep, he went for the book of records. So that he will be reading that since sleep has gone from him. There are times you might not be able to sleep and instead of just tossing up and down and rolling up and down there and asking why 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 don't you grab a book there why don't you grab something there and spend that sleepless night to do something remarkable that will lead you on to the future championship and so the king read and he read about Mordecai there's no accident there's no uh, kind of coincidence in the life of a champion God made him to read what he read about Mordecai he had been faithful he had reported a case and and he was wondering uh, at this man being um, honored compensated and here comes Haman the king said who is there and he said Haman let him come let him come and uh, the king did not allow him to talk first God will not allow your enemy to talk first the one that came and wanted to ask for your life and wanted to ask for your future and wanted to destroy you wanting to stop you God will shut their mouth they will not talk first but the king will talk for you I said the king will talk for you he said hey man tell me the man that God wants to honor what should I do to that man? Read the whole book of Esther when you get back home by yourself. And Haman said, the man you want to honor, he thought it was himself. He wanted to steal the honor belonging to Mordecai. Nobody will steal your honor. He said, get the royal apparel and close him. The best thing he wished for himself is said to the king. And the king said, All right, take Mordecai. Set him on the mule I ride. And cover him with the robe of approval. This 
is the man that God decides to honor. He had to do it. Your compensation is coming. Yeah. What he had done in the past that had gone to record that he didn't know will still come for his recommendation. The things, good things have done in the past will come to remembrance. The good part you played before in preserving the life, the livelihood, the progress, the promotion of the kingdom and the king. Everything will come to remembrance for you in Jesus' name. Number five, the condemnation of a former fallen champion. The condemnation now. Haman rushed back home. And he told his wife. And he told all the companions. And he said, look at what has become of me today. Condemned. Condemned. While we trust in Christ, our condemnation is taken away. Him, he didn't trust in Christ. He wanted to destroy the Jews, the people that will produce the Messiah. He had, he had condemnation. I come to number six, and it's the companionship with a favored champion. The companionship with a favored champion. When many people saw what had happened unto Mordecai, how God promoted him, they said, that's the kind of God I want to serve. And I'm telling you, you heard our panelists, those who answered questions, you had their qualifications, God has promoted them you'll be their companions in Jesus name and you see what is going on the power of God being manifested you'll be my companions in Jesus name and as I go you follow you go as I grow you follow you grow as I glow, you follow, you glow in Jesus' name. But you must come nearer, come nearer. See what I do, see what I did, and see how I'm doing it. And you climb on my shoulders. Spiritually, you will see farther than I have seen in Jesus' name. Number number seven is the confirmation of the foremost champion. The confirmation of the foremost champion. He became greater and greater, higher and higher, stronger and stronger, better and better. Monica is gone, and the Lord told me to throw that right to your lap over there. Yeah. It will happen to you. Yeah. I accept. I, accept. I, believe. I believe. I confess. It is mine. The Lord of heaven confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. Some years ago, nobody knew my name. But now, maybe today, nobody knows your name. In a few days, in a few months, in a few years, we'll see your name written on the sky. I come to number three now. Number three, we're talking about the pattern and the model of glowing championship. The pattern and the model of glowing championship. We're looking at Romans chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 37. Romans chapter 8 verse 37. Nay, 
In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. God loves you. Heaven loves you. Christ loves you. The Holy Spirit loves you. The promises of God, they are the expression of the love of God for you. God loves me. Me. God loves me. Me. God loves me. And you will show that love in a practical way. You will get to where God has ordained. You will get to. No one will stop you. Nothing will stop you. That unstoppable champion is before me today. And I see you. And just in a few years, it is done in Jesus' name. Online, look at me here. Unstoppable champion, online. I rejoice with you. You know, the days in which you live, they're glorious days, and God is going to make you a glowing champion in Jesus' name. Now, now, we're talking about pattern. We're talking about model. Who are these people, the personalities that God has given us, and they are patterns and models for championship. Championship C, Caleb's positive confession. Caleb, that's the beginning of that word, champion. When others said, we cannot, and they said, we will not, and they said, there are giants in the land. Caleb said, we are well able to overcome it. You know, there's something you call self-talk. What you're always telling yourself in your mind, that's what your mind will lean towards. If you're always saying, I cannot, mathematics, I cannot, science, I cannot, engineering, I cannot, formanship, I cannot, that place, hey, I've heard of that place. I cannot see it on that chair. That's not for me. Turn it around. Caleb said, we are well able to overcome it. And the first thing in our life is the positive confession. H is Anna. Anna's prayerful consecration. Prayerful consecration. Oh, Lord. I need a son, not for myself, not for my family. I need a son for the nation. I will give him as a gift unto you, and you'll use him for the nation. Let your consecration go beyond. Lord, I need water. I want to drink. I need food. I want to eat. I need clothing. I want to clothe myself. I need, I need, I need. Let your prayer, let your consecration go beyond your private self and bring a prayerful consecration. Lord, if you give me this, I will teach the young people. I will raise the downtrodden. I will water the deserts in families. I will provide for the people that cannot provide for themselves. Prayerful consecration. A is Abraham. Abraham's prompt commitment. Abraham's prompt commitment. Abraham here am I, Lord. Take that son, your only son, whom you love, and sacrifice him to me. <laughs> what kind of commandment is that? The commandment is so. The commandment is give. The commandment is offer him to me. And he offered one. Isaac 
unto God so that he will become the father of many nations. The seed your soul in confidence to God, in consecration to God, the one thing and the one life, your life, that you give to the Lord, the Lord multiplies that. That's why God needs I seek dead. No, he needed him alive. He already had the ram, the sacrifice. But he said, give me one and I'll give you millions. Give me one and I'll give you millions. Give me one in this generation. I'll give you millions in all generations in all dispensations so let it be as we're talking about championship abraham's prompt commitment emma that follows that is moses is prudent consideration moses prudent consideration now Moses was to be the Pharaoh's daughter's son. At that time, no part of the Bible had been written. At that time, uh, there was uh, no water out of the rock. At that time, there was, not food, there was no food coming from heaven for anybody. Moses did not see that, but he said, I give up this now. What he was giving up was a good position. It wasn't uh, something sinful. I give up this because I look at Christ in the future. And I want to share in the suffering of Christ. And so, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter and he accepted the call of god accept the call of god in your life god is planning something unprecedented for your life in jesus name amen, amen. you know the very fact that you came here today and you are staying there in the sun and you leave everything behind, you have made a good choice. That good choice, heaven is going to repay you. Blessings you never thought of, blessings you never dreamt of, will come upon your life in Jesus' name. And so, he now led the children of Israel. And God worked miracles through him. Water came out of the rock. Manna came down from heaven. Amalekites were all defeated, routed. Not only that, the Lord gave him the inspiration and the revelation to write Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and it has become useful, part of the book of God, to the rest of the world in many centuries. The one thing you give up for the glory of God, the Lord is going to multiply the blessedness of effectiveness in your life in Jesus' name. P, championship. P is Peter's penitent conscience. Uh, you know, but sometimes when somebody has done something, something uh, that even when it's recorded and all the people see that, what you think is, like Peter, I can't be a leader again. I can't preach and thousands get converted again. I can't walk miracles and my shadow will be healing the sick again. I have blown it. The Lord will forgive you. Amen. He forgave Peter. He will forgive you. 
He, will, he turned his life around. He turns your life around today in Jesus' name. And you didn't even hear a sermon. And John did not come to say, Peter, see what you've done. Jesus looked back and saw him. He wept. He was forgiven. You are forgiven. Where are you? I said you are forgiven. And all the guilt and all the shame and all the condemnation, the Lord wipes away your life in Jesus' name. He had a penitent conscience. I is I six persevering cultivation. I six persevering cultivation. As you read Genesis chapter 26, he dug a well. The enemy stopped that. They put sand into it and no water came out. He didn't give up. And he went again and dug another well. And he stopped it. No problem. And then he went again and he kept on going and going. You know, my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter there. The world is filled. Filled up with the people that will pour sand in the well you have dug. But don't give up. That's not the end of the story in your life. Yeah. You know, many years ago, I'm sorry to, you know, tell you this. We're in the class and, you know, I, I can see the, the face of the teacher now. And I can see the, um, I can see, I can remember his name. Or in his class, I won't mention the subject now. And we submitted our papers. And when they returned the papers to us, he put a big round circle and put a dot inside on my paper. What do you call that? I said, when you draw that circle, you put a dot inside. What do you call that? Zero. That's what I got. But today, I don't get zero anymore. I said, today, I don't get a zero anymore. Your zero life has passed away. And from today, a hero. <laughs> what do you say there? I heal. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. And you know, sometimes when I speak about my past failure, my past zero, zero, 24 percent, 18 percent, people cannot believe because when you become a hero, all the zeros of your life are forgotten. And from this day, all the zeros of your past life, they are forgotten in Jesus' name. And I see cultivated, and the Lord gave him a hundredfold. Oh, is Obadiah, Obadiah's practical courage. Ahab and Jezebel were persecuting the prophets of God. And Jezebel was killing them. And Obadiah hid a hundred of them in the kingdom of Ahab, of Jezebel, and hid them and fed them two times every day. Obadiah's practical courage. You know, champions in life, we have to have courage, practical practical when it appears nothing is working and nobody is working when it appears everything is down and everything will remain down somebody rises up and he says i'm going to manifest courage practical courage that's what makes champions and nehemiah's purposeful consistency. He was to build the wall of protection around the city of God. Tobias said, what's he doing? 
Sambalat said, was he doing? And the evil said, if a fox will go over that wall, everything will fall and collapse. You must be able to endure ridicule, endure jesting, endure name calling. If you are going to be a champion, they will belittle you. There will be tirades of words, negative words, coming against your life. But you are consistent and you remain consistent. That is how you become an unstoppable champion. S. Samuel's pure character. He lived in the midst of corruption, evil, sinfulness. But he made up his mind, that's not for me. I see the dog eating vomit, but that's not for me. I see the pig rolling in the mire, but that's not for me. It's when you make your choice and you say all the dregs, defilement, Degrading things that people do like dogs, like pigs. That's not for me. It's when you labor like Samuel. A pure conduct, a pure character. You're on your way to being a champion. H is Ezekiah. Ezekiah's personal confidence. Ezekiah's personal confidence. Ezekiah became sick. And he was sick unto death. Now, I need to explain something to you. Sickness comes to almost everyone. When sickness comes to a person that has no vision, sickness grounds them when sickness comes to a person that has no purpose in life sickness crushes them but when sickness comes to somebody what's a vision who knows he has not reached that climax and the place of championship and he knows I am getting there. He will say no to sickness. Once again, I miss you there. Yeah. Sickness has ears to hear. And when sickness comes, you are discouraged, you are disheartened, no hope. No vision, no drive, no passion, nothing before you to aim at. And sickness comes. You say, yes. What am I even doing here on earth? This suffering is too much. Okay, sickness. Do your best and do your work and do your worst. Sickness has ears to hear. But as a kind he said, sickness, I still have a goal. I still have a peak. I still have a work to do. Sickness, you have ears. I say no. Somebody say no. no. <laughs> you know, you are going for an exam. You are prepared. And you know, this is a remarkable exam. And it's at that time you wake up in the morning and sickness knocks at the door. You say, what's your name? What are you doing here? I'm going for an exam that I've prepared for and I'm aiming for first class. Are you aiming for second class then? What are you aiming for? I'm aiming for first class sickness. I say no, it will go. Yeah. And as the fire faced the wall, 
he wouldn't look at Isaiah and he said, God, what story am I hearing? I am not ready to go. And God said, I confirm, I affirm your word, you will not die. Before that exam, you will not die. During that exam, you will not die. After that exam, you will not die. Before that promotion, you will not die. After that promotion, you will not die. Before that exaltation, you will not die. After that exaltation, you will not die. And God said, Ezekiah, I know you are asking for healing. I give you healing, but I give you 15 extra years to live. 15, 15, 15 years. How many days are there? God has multiplied your life. The thing I should have done, I didn't do that. I was careless. I was playful. But now God gives you extra strength, extra health, extra years, and you will do it in Jesus' name. And then we come to Isaiah. Isaiah's penetrating conviction. I and my children whom God has given me were for signs and wonders in the land, in the nation. I and the children that God has given me, where are they? You are for signs and wonders in this land in Jesus' name. Good things will be written about you. Good things will be said about you. Signs and wonders will follow your life in Jesus' name. Championship. Now we come to the P. Is Paul's persuasive conscientiousness. Conscientiousness. That means somebody, he walks with all his mind, all his heart, all his life, everything he has to do. He puts everything there. And from today, you'll have conscientiousness. You'll be persuasive. And your life will be taken away from the reefs and rafts. And you are going to become a pivoted person, a pilot, a pioneer that will lead others even to great, great, great success in Jesus' name. Championship. Made for championship. Established for championship. And the Lord will take you from level zero and bring you to level hero. What are you? You know, we're going to pray. It doesn't take a long time as we pray. The Lord will effect it in your heart, in your life, in Jesus' name. Whatever you found difficult, impossible before, they're now easy and they are possible. In my life, possibilities. In my life, championship. In my life, heroism. In my life, success. Where are you? I hear your voice, but I want to see you. God bless you. Stand up there. Stand up there. And if you have not given your life to the Lord, it begins with personal salvation. And it's very easy. Personal. I give myself to you. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself for me. You paid my price. You took my sin. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And here you are. Hand over those things to him. And immediately you do that. He receives them. He accepts them. Now he gives you his life, new life, saved, forgiven, converted. Say, Lord, thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I receive your salvation. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your new life. Thank you, Lord. It is done. Yeah. 
and if there is sickness in your life you give your sickness unto the lord your sickness hand it over to the lord it's not yours anymore i said sickness is not yours anymore hand it over to the lord lord i thank you say that lord i thank you you have taken my sickness away if there's failure in your life your moral life your academic life your professional life Christ is there hand over the failure unto him do that say lord i hand over my failure into your hands now give me your own success and he does that now thank you lord you have taken my failure away say that thank you lord you have taken my failure away now you are set for championship i am set for championship raise up your hand father we love you we thank you you do not count anyone so downtrodden that you cannot lift them up and your goodness is for everyone every boy every girl every teenager every male every female every man every woman every brother every sister every member of the kingdom every minister of the kingdom lord we come to you one and all whatever has been stopping the onward journey of championship in any life take it away in jesus name the condemnation of sin, take it away in Jesus' name. The punishment, take it away in Jesus' name. The sickness, take that away in Jesus' name. Satanic attack, affliction, take everything away in Jesus' name. And Lord, any failure of the past, now is past and the river of the of the grace of god will wash them all away under the bridge in jesus name now lord for everyone strength everyone power everyone success everyone vision everyone a new passion and lord i pray that your people will all become champions through christ and now everyone can do all that you have ordained they will do as you strengthen everyone in jesus name no more failure in our midst here today no more downtrodden poor people in our midst here today lift up everyone higher and higher greater and greater stronger and stronger and from this day take everyone to the next level after that the next level yeah. after that the next level yeah. until everyone in their domain in their subject area in their profession in their calling they become the champion you have made everyone to be yeah. manifestation in every life confirmation in every life oppression by the anointing in every life in jesus name thank you lord because we know you have answered 
In Jesus' name we pray.